Easy. Okay. Easy. Whenever. Oh, good afternoon. I'm Joy Krupper and this is Nixon. And I'm here to talk to you, we are here to talk to you about the basics of getting ready for a driving class. There are several requirements according to the rule book on things that you need in your harness. And of course you've got to have your harness going before anything else. Since most of you won't be dealing with a collar harness, I went ahead and used my breast collar harness because it would be more familiar for light horses. The breast collar, the breast peak, needs to go right over the point of their shoulder, making sure that when it's tight, it doesn't cut off their wind. Every harness needs to have a crupper, which is the piece that goes under the tail and it stabilizes the whole harness. If you've never put a crupper on your horse before, don't start with that. Work up to it gradually because it might be a rodeo. Um, it also needs a britchin. And this is uh, what serves as the brakes for your um, entourage going down the road. So it's very important to have it and you'll see how it's hooked up um, there too. Um, it also calls for wrap straps. Now my harness does not have wrap straps. It has um, shaft loops, which you will need for the shafts, but they just buckle down so that once the shafts are in, we buckle it down and they can't go any place. If you didn't have that, a wrap strap comes up from the girth, wraps around the shaft and, and ties off to keep the shafts from Say you're trotting along nicely and you hit a bump and you tip back and your shafts do this and you get dumped out on your head. Not fun. So you always make sure that your shafts are tied down so they can't do that. Every driving bridle needs to have blinders or blinkers and they serve a couple of purposes. One of which is to help keep your horse focused on what's ahead and the other thing is to keep them from being able to see what is dragging along behind them. Because a horse being a prey animal, when something is coming after them that they can't get away with from, they may just take off. It also, the 4-H rules say that you're supposed to have a cavison style nose band. Draft horse bridles aren't made with a cavison, so this has a nose band, but it doesn't come all the way around and a snaffle or a driving bit. This is a driving bit called a butterfly because the things are the places that you hook the lines in and these are lines not reins um, gives you several different options. Of course this one would be straight in so it would be a snaffle bit and then the farther down you go the more leverage you have. Uh, the other thing you need, I'll have to step away for a minute, is a driving whip. This is not like a lunge whip, it's about the same length, but it only has a short popper. And this is not for beating your horse. This is one of your aids. When you're riding, you have your hands, your weight, your seat, your legs. When you're driving, you have your hands, your voice, and your whip. And it's usually just used to touch them most of them are pretty responsive to it, so um, it just helps give direction. Requirements for your vehicle, can you turn around and show the cart? Requirements for the vehicle are that you have, it can either be two or four wheel, you need to have a basket or footrest. This one has a footrest but your feet can't just be dangling out there. Um, and it also has to have a, a single tree. This is the single tree and we will hook the traces into it. You'll see how that's done in a minute. 
the other thing I wanted to show you at this point is this is the um, hold back straps and you'll see where we hook this in to make it work with the brakes for the whole thing so if you want to turn it off okay now we are attached to the cart and you can see that these hold down straps keep the straps from going up you can also see that the bridging is hooked to these hold back straps so that when the cart comes forward if the horse stops the cart's going to stop before it runs into his backside that can also cause a moment of disconcertion um, never put your horse into the vehicle before you have bridle and lines on him and never take the bridle and lines off before the vehicle is off those are really important things never um, think that oh well we're heavy enough to keep it down you never can tell what's going to happen and always have your britchen hooked up um, you are also required to have your lines either sewn together or buckled together and that would be so that if you happen to drop one you're not out of luck they're hooked together you can get it back um, when you're driving you should hold the lines very similar to how you would hold them for English riding and if you need to shorten to make a turn it's just like in English pinch and slide pinch and slide your hands should be held about in front of you all the time and you should anticipate when you're going to need to um, turn so that you can be ready um, driving is a lot of fun but it's not for the faint of heart and it's not to be taken as a lark um, oh one more thing if you're riding alone the, you should ride in the middle of your cart to help keep it balanced if you're riding with another person which often we do in 4-H the driver is on the right it's a British thing you ready so here we are um, having a little drive it's pretty soft out here Nixon hasn't been driven single for about a year and a half but it's good old reliable Nixon so we're doing a little jog there are actually four speeds of trot there are actually and actually they're all the same speed they just depend on length of stride come G come G Oh, another thing that we need to talk about is when you reverse with a horse in cart you do what is called reverse on the diagonal so you go till you come to a corner and usually the ring steward will indicate which corner and you turn hard in this case left come ha come ha and you go diagonally across the ring to the other corner Nixon trot Nixon trot <laughs> and when you get to the other side you turn right so that you're going the other direction 
and that would be a reverse on the diagonal. One important thing that your horse needs to know is, whoa, that was pretty sloppy. Whoa means the next step is the Grand Canyon stop now. It does not mean stop, step. It does not mean stop when you kind of feel like it. So practice that when you're on the ground and when you're riding. If you use the word whoa, it needs to be sharp and firm and it means now so that there's no doubt about it. Come G. There are also some maneuvers that the book says you can ask for. Back, back, back. Good boy. Come G. Step G. Step G. Hey. Step G. Step G. Whoa. Walk. Step. Nixon. Come G. Good grief. Come to you. Whoa, that was better. Nixon, back, 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 back. Come G, come G, come G, come G, come G, come G. Come G. Whoa. 